Welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is React JS full tutorial series for absolute beginners. We are continuing to learn the 20 most commonly used hooks in React. Each of these hooks that you are learning is extremely important in some or the other use case in real time projects. Hence, it's very, very important to have complete understanding and a fundamental working prototype of or each one of these hooks. Let's get started. Today we are learning about use context. If you haven't checked out the first 25 parts, make sure that you go through them in order to have continuity to your learning. This is part 26. Earlier we had covered use state and use effect. Today we are learning use context. So these are the top 20 hooks that I am covering as part of the series right now. Today we are learning use context. Use context is a React hook that is used to access the value stored in a React context from within functional components. Right? That's the theoretical definition, but I'll break it down for you. Usually what happens is that let's say you have a multi-structured components right? in a hierarchy, parent, child, grandchild, etc., etc., which means that you need to pass the data through each of this hierarchy as part of the prop that becomes really cumbersome and tedious. Instead, using use context, we can, in any functional component, we can directly access the value without passing through props. That's the most common use of use context. Now, what are the benefits of using it? Like I said, it will avoid us in prop drilling, right? It helps us in writing more cleaner, more maintainable and more readable code. The component coupling, because you're not passing data from parent to child to grandchild, etc., the component coupling is reduced. It simplifies the state management. Now, let's say you have some global uh, state, let's say login, authentication details, or token, or say theme, etc. These are common and global. So you can always store those and make your state management simplified. Use, use context also helps us in improving the performance optimization and helps us in promoting separation of concern. Now, I'll talk about a little bit about the use cases, real-time use cases in practical projects and where you will use them. Authentication user data, like I said, if you have some token user information that you need to share across different components throughout your application, you can use use context. Theming and styling. This is yet another classic use case. Let's say user has some settings or themes he has stored. You want to access and share it between components. You can use use context. Similarly, for language and localization, for routing and navigation, shopping cart, like you might want to see the product summaries, cart summary, checkout pages, all of these can be global state. Preferences and settings, we talked about it then API fetching and data. So when you make an API call, you get a data. You can store it in a common global context and access it throughout the components. So these are the commonly used use cases. Okay. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take one of these examples, let's say theming, right? And I'm going to show you how to use use context for theming. Let's get started with our coding. All right, before we do that, let's just see our application. Our application looks like this so far. In the previous episode, when we were learning the hooks use effect, we learned how to load this data. Okay, so let's go ahead and inside the source, I'm creating a hooks folder where I'll keep all my hooks. So I'm going to create a context by the name theme context.js. Now what this will do is it will store the information about the theme. So let's quickly get in react. Uh, we will also need use context and we will also need create context. That's the things you need to import. Once you have done that, let's create a context then. We will say theme context equal to create context. So that's how you create a context. Now let's create the function and export it. So we'll write create function and always remember whenever you create a context, create a provider for it. Now what this will do is it would just let's say we are passing children to it right that's what it would accept as a param now the next thing we'll do is let's create a 
uh, let me also use use state so that way I can show you so here I'm going to build that and say initially my theme is this and when I say update it I'll say use state and we will update this state so initial state is light okay the initial state of our design would be light theme but when we click on a button it should update so I'm going to create a toggle theme and what it would do this method is simply toggle from light to dark and I'm going to use set theme and set the new one so here let's pass the current theme that's what we will pass and once you have that what we will do is current theme check here it's just a uh, conditional operator I'll put I'll say if it is light make it dark if or else make it not current theme make it light if it is dark make it light if it is light make it dark that's all you need uh, did I close everything yep okay so this is good so far okay we closed it here and what we will do it's a functional component so let's just return and what we will return here is we will return the theme context dot provider remember this should be in caps okay and what would be the value that it will return it will return you two things so we can say it will return us a theme and toggle theme that's what we will pass the value we are storing these two values now what will happen whenever we want to call it will return this value all right so that's good for this functional component we'll need one more functional component to export the context itself so we will write use theme and we will say return use context and here you'll write theme context that's it that's all you need so take a look again first we are creating a theme context and here we are telling inside a functional component by the name theme provider we are passing children in this what we are doing initially we are setting the theme as light using use state and then we are toggling just by checking the condition whether if it's light make it dark if it's dark make it light and it's a functional component so we are returning this theme context dot provider that provide this values whenever this is called okay this is good so far now I need one more file so let's say where this will be called right so I'm going to say it uh, let me call it login.js okay so in login.js what we are going to do simply use it use that value so react and then let's say and we will import use theme from hooks slash theme context that's what we exported here see use theme that's what I'm bringing in here so this is just any other component okay it can be your header it can be footer any anything that you would want right right so here let's return a simple um, whatever you want to put it right h1 let's say theme provide uh, let's say this is theme switcher right so what we will do is just have a button on click we will say toggle theme now we need to import the toggle theme okay so for that we will do const here we will import theme comma toggle theme from from what use theme okay so from use theme we are bringing in toggle theme and the initial theme okay so we can print that also and close this here say toggle theme and you can put a paragraph and say current theme, theme and close it here okay so all we are doing is using this okay and that's all we are doing we are use we are trying to use the theme context okay and get that value so here you'll say export default export that component so what it means is this can be any component where you want to use this now you can just import use theme and use it in any number of components where you want to access this data the last thing we will need is in the header app.js we need to call it right 
so let's do that and say theme provider so it imported the theme provider from hooks and then we can close it and we can just simply call the login component and close it okay so now it says one error let's see what is the error it says create context is is defined but never used let's see create context create context right it's not context it's context now it's successfully done so typo mistake about that so now take a look here we got the login component that is coming from our app.js inside this we are saying theme provider that means now this will have information about the theme automatically since it's wrapped in theme provider we are providing that values to login inside login all we are doing is getting that use theme and importing theme and toggle theme so we can use it anywhere we want let's me show you the example so see here it is dark click on it light click on it dark so that way whenever you want to use any data from the context now this context has this definition and values it is returning in login component see I'm not passing any props right so this is one of the classic examples same way you can have auth context where you will store the user information or the user token and that's what you can access it in all components just by importing them using use theme right so when you say use theme if you see here it's using context theme context which is again inside this provider right so provider is used in app.js when you when you wrap it in theme provider that means you're providing and extending it as a children it will have access to those theme and toggle theme all right I hope uh, the example is clear this is one of the classic examples often used and I'm um, you'll be surprised that how many times we will use use context for updating the value once but using it everywhere in the application I hope uh, this is clear I hope uh, you will be able to now implement it so let me know if you have any questions or doubts in the comment section I'll be more than happy to help you in the next episode we will learn about use reducer yet another very very useful helpful hook especially when you're building complex enterprise applications keep your learning journey with me continue that and as always I'm always reachable if you have any questions or doubts thank you so much for joining see you in the next episode